Hello, my name is Paul Douglas, and I'd like to welcome you to this short YouTube video entitled Shattering the Mormon Church's Growth Myth. For as long as I can remember, the LDS Church has been perpetuating the myth that it's experiencing extraordinary growth, the inference being that therefore it must be the one true church. Each year, apostles of the church proudly announce that it's one of the fastest growing religions in the world, and an unwitting and lazy media repeat this mantra which is blatantly and demonstrably untrue. While the church at one time did grow at a rate faster than it has today, it's not now, nor has it ever been the fastest growing church in America, nor the fastest growing religion in the world, far from it. An example of this deceptive imposition can be found on the church's official newsroom website in an article entitled Church Growth, it reads in part what's on the screen. You can pause and read it if you wish. This article is misleading and factually incorrect in so many ways. It leads an unknowing public to believe that the Mormon church is not just growing, but experiencing extraordinary growth. This is simply not true. The growth of the Mormon church is all but over. The growth rate in 2020 was 0.6%. That's just over one half of 1% growth, the lowest annual percentage growth rate since 1857. The church is likely in decline. It's an absolute freefall in Europe. Indeed, if it were not for the current missionary successes in West Africa and a few parts of South America, even this paltry 0.6% increase wouldn't be reached. Yet the LDS Church still perpetuates the myth that the church is experiencing extraordinary growth because it serves its purposes. While the church publishes worldwide membership numbers at about 16 million, Camorra.com reports that at least half of those the church counts don't even identify themselves any longer as Mormon. Assuming that the number of active members is lower than those who would not even want to be identified as Mormon, hardly a heroic assumption, the actual functional membership of the LDS Church, even ignoring the record number of resignations, is probably, realistically, somewhere between four and five million men, women, and children. And it's a revolving door. While the church does not release the numbers of members resigning from the church, for obvious reasons, it's likely that that number is now approaching the number of new converts. As well, for everyone hiring a lawyer or notary to officially withdraw from the LDS church, as you must do at the present time, many, many more just walk away, increasing the already enormous inactivity rate worldwide. In Great Britain, the activity rates are currently sitting at about 15 percent. The LDS Church also counts membership differently than other churches. In most Christian churches, unlike the Mormon Church, there's a democratic ideal, with members being asked to vote on various matters. Therefore, these churches don't wish to waste their time and talents and resources reaching out to those who are no longer interested in their organizations. In Mormonism, however, once someone joins the church, even if they attend once and never return for the rest of their lives, they're maintained on the church records for the rest of their life, and in many cases far beyond. The church assumes for tabulation purposes that if they do not receive notice of a member's passing, they will continue counting them as members until they reach 110 years of age. But back to the church's newsroom posting. Let's look at each of the lies and attempts to deceive it contained. Deception number one. After crowing about the membership growing to 2 million people by 1963, they write, This accelerated growth pattern has continued with about a million new members added every several years. This is a falsehood. In the last five years, the church's own numbers report that an average of about 200,000 people join each year report an average increase of about 200,000 people per year, half of those being the children of members not official members because they're not yet confirmed. This means, in truth, that the church sees an increase of about a million actual new members every decade. Deception number two. The consequences of this rapid and sustained growth are seen in many places in the world where the church operates. The church reports growth of 1.47% in 2017, 1.21% 1 in 2018, 1.54% in 2019 and 0.6% in 2020. In what universe can this be considered rapid and sustained growth? Deception number three. Congregations that are grouped into geographical areas known as wards are periodically divided as they become too large to administer or to worship in a chapel or meeting house all at once. 
New buildings are being completed virtually every day of the year to house this growing membership. Well, first of all, virtually every day is not every day, and this statement is deceptive, as it sounds like the meeting houses are bursting at the seams because of all the new members flocking in. Deception number four. This article goes on to state that, according to the National Council of Churches, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the second fastest growing church in the United States. The article they're referring to was written over a decade ago by Melissa Wade, and it was entitled, What are the fastest growing churches in the United States? Not surprising, the church's post does not quote the National Council of Churches article directly, which states, Jehovah Witnesses and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, regarded by many Christians as cults, reported the largest membership increases in a year, according to the National Council of Churches 2018 Yearbook of American and Canadian Churches. Not only is this very old data, but it's based on dubious numbers that were supplied by the church itself. As this chart by respected statistician Clint Kimball shows, using data from the Church's own almanac published by the Deseret News and the official conference reports of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the active functional membership in the Church is less than 5 million people, with non-actives at about double that number. Kimball's research also shows that active membership in the Church is projected to be virtually the same in 2060, with non-actives at that time being four times active membership. I think that Kimball's projections for 2060 are likely overly optimistic, as his calculus was done prior to the most recent misstep and accompanying bad press that the church has sustained, specifically the reversal of the church's ill-conceived and now reversed exclusionary LGBTQ revelation, as well as the bad press the church has received due to their sexually invasive and psychologically damaging youth worthiness interviews, and the revelation that the church has an investment fund well in excess of $100 billion. It's a real challenge to get honest membership statistics from the church itself. There are myriad examples of how inflated and inaccurate these counts are. In Iceland, for example, where every registered religion receives a tax rebate for every member over 16, the government reports 162 registered Mormons in, in 2019, while the church reports on their website 288 members an inflated rate of 178%. In Mexico, the church overstates its membership by 76%. In Chile, it's even worse, 80%. And in Canada, it's 41%. Even if we compare Mormonism to Christian denominations, the LDS church's current dismal growth rate of 0.06% stacks up poorly against that of a great many other churches. The fact is that the growth rate of the Mormon church is essentially the same as the Catholic church and most Protestant churches in America, despite the latter not employing a huge proselyting missionary force. In 1965, the Church of God in Christ had 425,000 members. In 2012, the membership was 5 million 499,875 members, an increase of 1194%. In 1973, the Presbyterian Church in America had 41,232 members. In 2013, the membership was 367,033 people, an increase of 790%. In 1965, the Assemblies of God had 572,123 members in 2013. The membership was 3,030,944, an increase of 430%. In 1965, the Southern Baptist Convention had 10,770,573 members. In 2013, this membership had increased to 15,735,000. 940, an increase of 46%. With a growth rate of 0.6%, convert baptisms flagging, and declining membership activity rates 25%, for example, for young single adults, interest in the Mormon church is clearly diminishing. And yet we get Apostle Quinton L. Cook making the following statement. Some have asserted that more members are leaving the church today and that there is more doubt and unbelief than in the past. This is simply not true. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has never been stronger. 
The number of members removing their names from the records of the church has always been very small and is significantly less in recent years than in the past. Professor Henry G. Frankfurt at Princeton University distinguished between a liar and a bullshitter. A liar knows the truth and is trying to convince us of something different. A bullshitter either doesn't know the truth or doesn't care. Why do church leaders like Cook, and he's only one of many, not choose the, the truth option, but rather project a narrative that they know is false? The Chinese proverb says three men make a tagger, and it refers to an individual's tendency to accept absurd information as long as it's repeated by enough people. Several cultures have similar ideas. A Czech proverb says, a lie repeated a thousand times becomes a truth. It's the big lie, and Hitler's apostle, Joseph Goebbels, would be proud of his Mormon counterparts. If you tell a lie often enough, it will eventually be accepted as the truth. The answer to why the Mormon church and its leaders do not tell the truth when it comes to the church's lack of growth lies in their understanding of the law of conformity or social proof. This law refers to the psychological phenomenon where people reference the behaviors of others to guide their actions. It recognizes that we are social animals. We like what other people like. We reject and discard what other people reject and discard. We tend to do what other people do, to follow the pack. Many people perceive behaviors as being more correct in a given situation to the degree that others view them as being accurate. This law extends to what we wear, how fast we drive on the freeway, what we buy, and yes, even what religion we adhere to. Advertisers have been aware of and taken advantage of this law since the birth of media. They quickly learned that one of the most successful ways to sell a product to customers is to demonstrate that other people, like themselves, like it and use it. Whether it's a soft drink, a laundry detergent, a candy bar, or Viagra. If you can show that other people like ourselves are purchasing the product, it becomes psychologically less risky to engage in the same consumer behavior. It's all about follow the leader. If you're over 40 years of age, you can no doubt remember every McDonald's restaurant sign in the world displayed something that read, 30 million served. What was the message? Well, if all those folks eat it, it must be good. In Southern Alberta, where the Rocky Mountains meet the Great Plains, Close to where I grew up, there's a World Heritage Center called Head Smashed In Buffalo Jump. It's an archaeological site known around the world as a remarkable testimony to the life of the Plains Indians and bears witness to the method of hunting practiced by Native peoples in North America as far back as 6,000 years. Due to their excellent understanding of the regional topography and bison behavior, Native people hunted bison by stampeding them over a precipice. They then carved up the carcasses and dragged the pieces to be butchered and processed in a butchering camp set up on the flats not far from the cliffs. So how did the natives manage to lure the buffalo over the precipice? Remember, they had to do so without the use of horses, which didn't exist in North America before the European settlement. Well, the folks at UNESCO probably describe it best. To start the hunt, buffalo runners, young men trained in animal behavior, would entice the herd to follow them by imitating the bleating sound of a lost calf. As the buffalo moved closer to the drive lanes, long lanes of stone cairns built to help the hunters direct the buffalo to the cliff kill site, the hunters would circle behind and unwind the herd and scare the animals by shouting and waving robes. The buffalo engaged in a follow the leader behavior to their peril. To the leaders of the church, I ask, is allowing an article like this, the one that's printed currently, on your newsroom website in the spirit of the 13th article of faith is continuing to deliver talks perpetuating the myth that the church is experiencing extraordinary growth in keeping with the church's published definition of lying as any communication or falsehood or untruth for the purpose of deception. Don't we as members of the church, as well as those looking at it, deserve better? I know I haven't pulled any punches here, but sometimes we have to look at the facts and think independently, even critically, rather than just take things at face value, or even worse, simply accept them because those with authority or a vested interest want us to. Well, I believe that many Mormons fail to apply critical thinking skills to the church adequately. This is not meant to be an indictment of rank-and-file members, nor am I disputing that faith is important. At its core, faith is the expectation of good things to come. It goes beyond hope. 
Hope lives in the mind, whereas faith resides in the heart. It involves accepting that which cannot be established as truth through the proper exercise of our naturally endowed human cognitive facilities. As Kant famously said, I have found it necessary to deny knowledge to make room for faith. But God gave us a mind so that we might know what is true and what's not. He tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5.21, To test everything and to hold fast to that which is good. In Isaiah 1.18, the Lord pleads with us to come now and let us reason together. The British philosopher Austin Ferrer noted that rational argument does not create belief, but it maintains a climate in which belief may flourish. In other words, I think we need to call bullshit when and where we see it, whether it's coming from a car salesman, a politician, or a leader in the LDS church. To the leaders of the Mormon church, I would suggest it's time to abandon this untenable and bogus growth narrative. The fact that the LDS church is experiencing subpar growth doesn't necessarily mean that it's not true. And to members of the church and investigators and perhaps others watching this video, I would suggest that perhaps we need to look below the surface. Do not take everything on face value. Critical thinking is not a sin. My name is Paul Douglas. Goodbye.